Hey fellow creatives! Today I'm going to be talking about this painting and how it went from me almost not finishing it because I hated it so much to it being one of the best paintings I've ever done and people really really enjoying it. So we're going to be going a little bit through my painting process and also what happened at that transition between me hating this painting to me really falling in love with it. We'll cover a little bit of my thought process and mindset while I was creating this painting, as well as some of the technical aspects that I used that if you're a fellow artist, you can also employ in your paintings. All right, let's get into it. This painting is called A Moment in the Bustling, and I named it that because this is a place in New York. It's lively, the atmosphere, it's always moving. We have a couple of cars in here. You have this atmosphere of like, these buildings are really tall, everything is moving around you, especially with these colorful brush strokes, you get the impression of like so many lights and so much action. And yet this singular moment in time is being captured in this painting. Now this is the first cityscape I've ever done, which is why I was initially very intimidated by the idea of doing a cityscape. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be terrible. There's so many windows, especially in a city like New York. Well, to be honest, I was really the most intimidated by the windows. This painting started out with a subtractive underpainting. So the first layer was just three main colors. I kind of blocked in those general shapes of the different buildings and then used a subtraction tool. This is my subtraction tool to kind of scratch out of that paint and create the general shapes of the building. And then after that, I did a second and third layer of building the layers of paint, those transparent oils, those opaque oils, going from cool colors in the background to warm colors in the foreground. If you'd like a review on the difference between warm colors and cool colors and why they're important in a painting like this, I'll attach my video on that above. And I also have a free reference guide that I'll attach below so you can find out which of your colors are warm and which are cool. That's a little bit behind the process of how I completed this painting. There's a lot of straight lines, straight edges, really working on perspective in this painting. And I think where I got discouraged was trying to figure out how much detail I needed to include, where I could just give the hint of windows, give the hint of a person walking, without actually painting in the actual detail. When we look at an entire painting, your eyes kind of fill in what's left out anyways, but I was trying to find that balance between what is the appropriate amount of detail for a painting like this without kind of burning myself out. And I think I found the appropriate amount of detail, but even still, I was getting really bored with it because I'm not like a super detail-oriented person. I like to be able to paint a bit faster. And I think since I had never done a cityscape before, I couldn't really see myself in the painting, my painting style yet in what I was doing. So that was discouraging for me and just made me feel kind of bleh. Probably either two thirds or three quarters of this painting, I was just trying to figure out how to paint like a semblance of windows and doors and all of these straight edges and straight lines with the right colors. I wasn't really having fun with the painting. Really where I had that shift was over here when I was painting this building. I think I was painting right about here. And all of a sudden I was like, screw it. I'm gonna do what makes me feel like I am an artist. I started painting outside of the lines. I just took that brush and went zoop. So you can see this part is where I actually started putting in what is becoming my personal style. And taking splashes of color and pulling them out of the lines. You can see all of these different splashes of color, these different brush strokes that seem to be random colors that are just like placed in different spots on the painting. And that's really when I started having a lot of fun. At first, with brush strokes like this one that go right over the building, I was like, oh, should I put that there? I did work really hard on the building, but this is what feels right. And it was just really freeing to be able to paint over those different places, like really see my mark as an artist, not just, oh, someone painted a cityscape. Great. So next question being, did I just pick random colors for this? No. So I typically used colors that were already somewhere in the painting. For example, 
this like teal, sage, green, whatever you would call it. There are already like highlights on the round part of this building that incorporate that color. Also on the side of this building, there's a lighter version of that color. So I use this green color in different parts throughout this painting already. This is like a red orange. It's kind of a mix of the red on these overhangs with the red orange that I put on this building in the front. And we even have some lavender that I put into this building in the background and I use lavender brush strokes in different part of this painting too. All of these brush strokes that appear to be random and giving the semblance of like blinding lights and just a lot of movement in the painting, those colors are coming from colors that were previously in the painting already. Everything kind of flows together. Even though it looks a little bit chaotic, it's still easy for your eye to comprehend. Now this has been kind of a breakthrough painting to me. I learned so much from it. I had never done cityscapes before and for most of it, it just felt like a cityscape. It felt really difficult and I didn't want to finish it. I even posted a YouTube short when I was in that place of like, I'm really discouraged about this. I, in order to finish this painting, I need some encouragement because I don't know what to do with it. It doesn't feel like mine. But I think for any artist, when you get in that place, just like a lot of the comments that were on that YouTube short, like a lot of artists were saying, hey, just step away from it for a little bit, whether that's a couple days or a couple of months, like it doesn't really matter. You just need to take this at your own pace. I took a couple of days and when I came back and just like, started following my instincts. It started to look like a painting that was mine. I do want to have that skill and that level of quality to where people want to buy the painting in the first place. At the same time, if a painting doesn't have my mark on it, if someone can't look at a painting and recognize Autumn Hunter probably painted that. Those are the kind of brush strokes she uses. Tell the kind of atmosphere she creates. I see that in this painting. If someone can't look at my painting and see that, why do I even want to sell it? People want painting so they can see the artist in it. This painting became a thousand times better when I actually added those marks and just let loose and did what my instincts told me to do. So a moment in the bustling is actually still available. So now that you know the story behind it, you can see this painting. If you're like, this painting belongs in my home, it can belong in your home. I'll link the information down below if you want to learn more about it or if you want to purchase it. But I hope that gives you all a better understanding of my thought process behind this painting. Why in my mind I thought this is a failure at first, but it actually, once I let go, turned into a great success. So there you have it. That's a moment in the bustling in a nutshell, my process behind it, and I'll see you in my next video.